welcome to the Beyond Barriers podcast. If you're an ambitious woman who wants to dominate your career, then you are in the right place. This podcast is co-hosted by Nikki Barua, digital innovator, serial entrepreneur, author, and speaker. And Monica Marquez, ex-Googler, diversity expert, and senior corporate leader. From inspiring stories to cutting-edge strategies, you'll learn how to develop the skill set, mindset, and tool set to get future ready fast and accelerate your success. Welcome to the Beyond Barriers Habits and Hacks show. Are you someone who doesn't have any mentors and has no idea where to find one? Or are you someone who does know the right people, but you don't know how to ask? In this episode, we'll discuss how to find mentors and the do's and don'ts to build powerful mentoring relationships. So let's start by discussing why mentorship matters. Well, there's an um, African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. At the end, we all know that success is never achieved alone. Mm -hmm. Look, athletes don't become Olympians without mentors and coaches to guide them and bring out the best in them, right? So if, if you are someone who wants to go far, you have to find the right mentors who will open doors, empower you with their wisdom, and help you navigate through your journey more effectively. Mentors can bring so much to your success. Here are just some of the ways in which mentors can impact you. First of all, mentors can shorten the learning curve, right? Mm -hmm. Because they have the experience, so they are able to tell you what they have learned. And instead of you trying to go through it with trial and error, Mm -hmm. they're literally shortening that learning curve by imparting their wisdom and the experience over to you. Exactly. Secondly, mentors help you um, see your strengths and weaknesses because they have that kind of honest, trusted relationship. So they can help you see in order to where you want to go, you know, what are the strengths that you have? What are the gaps that you need to work on? So that's really powerful and valuable guidance. Mm -hmm. Um, Third, mentors can get access to resources and relationships that you need. You know, often they are influential leaders. They're Mm -hmm. powerful in their positions. They've already established those valuable relationships or networks or have access to things that you might not have. And through those mentors, you can get access. And that's absolutely invaluable, you know, in order to get ahead. Fourth, uh, mentors are really great in helping you avoid painful and expensive mistakes. Yes. We all know that w- you know, when you don't know what you're doing, oftentimes you might um, just choose the hardest path. You might um, you know, find yourself in a difficult situation that frankly could have been avoided if you simply had uh, a mentor to tell you, hey, don't do this because um, it's, it's going to land you in trouble. So mm-hmm. mentors are fantastic in terms of being sort of, uh, you know, the, the guardians to protect you from, exactly. you know, the ditches and the deep ends. Um, number five, mentors, um, you know, put visibility on your achievements because they are typically in a position of power, influence, and mm-hmm. they can highlight your achievements to um, the right people or the right circles. Mm-hmm. Um, they can be your mouthpiece. They can be your advocates, you mm-hmm. know, behind closed doors, and they can help you um, spotlight, you know, your achievements that is harder for you to do on your own. Mm-hmm. Number six, um, they are ultimately your trusted and unbiased advisors, you know, in good times and bad. So they can uh, tell you what you need to hear and Mm -hmm. they can be that sounding board you can go to whenever you are in need of uh, something you can share with anyone else. Mentors are not necessarily your supervisors, your managers. So you can sort of go to them with challenging situations and, and know that you will get the right kind of advice and the you know uh, hold you also accountable to the steps that you need to take. Mm-hmm. And finally, number seven is mentors help you stay motivated through the tough times and overcome those challenges. You know, we've all been in those situations where you felt like, my gosh, I don't know if I can overcome this obstacle. I don't mm-hmm. know if I can get through this. Well, with mentors, you will not only find the support and the advice and the motivation, but you might get tangible advice on how to overcome those and and also the resources to get through it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is, you know, as John Maxwell said, one of the greatest values of mentors is the ability to see ahead what others cannot see and to help them navigate a course to the destination. 
you know, mm-hmm. mentors are really like the, you know, the uh, ones that help us see the things that we can't see yet mm-hmm. and help us get to where we need to get to in the fastest way possible. Exactly. I've been very fortunate to having amazing mentors throughout my career. And I know that I wouldn't be there without my mentors. And as you said, you know, mentors having the ability to see ahead and kind of help you navigate is exactly what they did for me, right? I was learning from their mistakes and they were paying it forward by sharing with me what it is that I needed to avoid in order to accelerate my success and to ensure that I wasn't stumbling where they stumbled. Um, Mentors were pivotal in my career and really helping me point out what I needed to be aware of and being prepared in what I needed to do when I did hit that barrier or that roadblock and the confidence that I had of knowing like, oh, this is what they told me to look out for. I know how to handle this. And if I still need some additional coaching, I know who to go to for this. So I believe that mentors are critical to anybody's success. And, you know, the main question I have is, why doesn't everybody have a mentor? What are some of the things that hold them back from getting those mentors? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question because you have to wonder when there's so much written about and proven about the power of mentorship, why aren't people actively uh, seeking and establishing these relationships? And it really comes down to two challenges. Number one is um, not consciously seeking out the mentors Mm -hmm. and sort of doing it alone. Just right. not being aware that I need to do this like it's a second job. Exactly. <laughs> find mm-hmm. those mentors. And the second challenge often is that you know what you need, but you just are going about it the wrong way. So mm-hmm. not knowing how to get and attract those right mentors. Right. So first off, if you're choosing to do it alone, you're doing it the hardest possible way. Right. You have to learn from others. You need others to get ahead. So if you think that the right way to succeed is simply doing your job and doing it alone, think again. That is absolutely not empowering you with what you need to learn faster, learn better, Mm -hmm. and frankly, have the advocacy and support of those that can bring out the best in you. Exactly. I mean, research shows people learn from people. And the most important thing is, like you said, is people have a fear of sometimes when you ask for help or you go to those individuals that they're going to think different of you or they're going to think that you're inadequate, but actually they're, they're more than happy to help you. Right. And, but like you said, the important thing is knowing how to mm-hmm. ask for that help. So if you're going up to complete strangers simply because they're successful or there's some celebrities or they're well-known leaders and you go up to them with no previous context or relationship and just suddenly ask them, will you be my mentor? Well, <laughs> chances right. are you're going to get rejected because... Um, you know, successful people, senior leaders, they're extraordinarily busy and they're focused on their mission. It's not that they don't want to help you. Mm -hmm. They're just not in a position to say yes to everybody and certainly not in a position to say yes to someone that they barely know. So Mm -hmm. um, you have to be able to contextualize, you know, not only the importance of finding the mentor, but also how to do it right. Exactly. So share, share to our listeners, how does someone actually find a mentor? What are some key things that they need to do? So um, here are the three key things to keep in mind in terms of finding the right mentor. Number one is be very specific about what you need. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is don't go to someone and say, can you help me get ahead? That's really broad. Can you help mm-hmm. me with my career? Well, that's really broad. You know, right. that, that is not a specific mentoring ask. So you have to get very clear first off with yourself. Mm-hmm. What are your goals? And depending on your goals, what are the biggest gaps and challenges that you need support for? And then based on that, if you create sort of a, uh, you know, an outline of all the things that you need, let's Mm -hmm. say there's five specific areas in which you need help. Think about who are the right people Mm -hmm. and the right profile of people who can mentor you in Mm -hmm. those areas. Right. You know, just because someone is successful doesn't mean they might be able to help you in that specific area, perhaps not in that point in time. So get very specific about your areas of growth Mm -hmm. or mentoring needs. Secondly, you know, um, be clear about how long do you need that help for? Don't enter a mentoring relationship 
as if it's for life. It's right. a privilege. So treat it with the respect it deserves. You know, you're better off asking someone saying something as specific as, um, you know, I'm looking for help, you know, in this specific area. I'm looking for help in improving my uh, presentation skills. I'm looking for guidance and mentorship in terms of running effective meetings. Mm -hmm. And I have observed that you're uh, really phenomenal in the way you run meetings and you're, you have such mastery in that. I'd love to learn from you. Would you consider mentoring me for the next six weeks or eight weeks so that I can come to you with specific questions mm -hmm. and a, you know, specific areas that I could learn from your expertise. Mm -hmm. And then before each mentoring session, do your homework, be really prepared, know what you need to know about them, but go to them with one specific question that you ask in every mentoring session. Right. Mm -hmm. So bottom line, step number one of finding a great mentor is being very specific about what you right. need. If you go in with a broad expectation, you're going to get a rejection or you're not going to get the help you need. Right. Well, it's almost exactly if you think about it, like, you know, if you are sick and you have an ailment, you say, okay, um, there's something going on with my sinuses. Then you go to a specialist that, that focuses on sinus. You wouldn't go to a podiatrist and ask them for help. Exactly. Just saying, I don't feel well is not going to help someone. Right. You need to kind of diagnose it yourself in terms of what you need help with. Exactly. Then step number two is broaden your perspective of who a mentor is. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, oftentimes we fall into this trap of um, asking celebrities or well-known people or super senior people to be our mentors. Mm -hmm. And where we are versus where they are can be a huge gap. You don't need to take that kind of a huge leap. That, right. isn't, that isn't the only way. Yes, you can always look above, but you might also benefit from looking sideways mm -hmm. to see who are your peers that might have a certain skill or a certain gift that they do exceptionally well that you can benefit from. Mm -hmm. You might also benefit from looking at people less experienced than you that are just phenomenal in a specific thing. Right. For example, they might be great at saying no. They might be great at work-life balance. They might mm -hmm. be great at something else that you lack and they can mentor you and you can mentor them back, mm -hmm. right? So think of mentors not as a specific individual that is ahead of you. Think of uh, mentoring in the context of a mentoring circle. Mm -hmm. You can have lots of different kinds of mentoring relationships for different types of needs. But again, going back to part one, if you are specific about what you need, then you mm -hmm. can kind of create this mentoring circle that addresses lots of different types of needs. Exactly. I mean, one great example of like thinking about someone who may be a little bit below you is thinking about if you are a mid-career or maybe even a more senior individual, but you need to know how to connect to Gen Zers, then find a mentor who's a Gen Zer who can teach you how to connect. Exactly. There's so many different, you know, there's no end to learning. There's, you know, there's no such thing that you've achieved a certain level right. of success and now you no longer need mentoring. We all need mentors at all stages of our life on our career. And so you just have to broaden your perspective mm -hmm. and create those mentoring circles. But the other thing to keep in mind is it's not just about, you know, person to person mentoring right. relationship. Uh, mentoring um, can also happen through content and through um, uh collateral, right? right. I mean, the, a lot of people that are, you may not be able to get access to, let's say, someone who's really famous in your industry, but perhaps they've written books. Perhaps mm -hmm. they have videos of interviews or speeches at conferences. Maybe they write blogs or they appear on podcasts. Right. Consume all of that content because here's the thing, their best advice and their wisdom is packed into all of this content and mm -hmm. it's free. So <laughs> right. you don't need to think of it as simply, you know, getting proximity to an individual. If there is someone in your industry or someone that you look up to or as a role model, consume all of the content that they put out. It might mm -hmm. be even something as simple as following them on social media, whether it's Twitter or Instagram or LinkedIn, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. you know, follow their content, engage with their content, learn from them. You will get so much value even if you don't have a direct relationship with them. Right. And then also if they happen to offer paid programs or courses or even coaching, then, you know, if that is someone you truly feel aligned with and that you can benefit from, 
then don't hesitate to engage even in that kind of, uh, you know, uh, relationship where you attend their conference if mm-hmm. they're hosting something, right. you know, sign up for a course or any kind of paid program, you know, so really broaden your perspective of that um, mentoring relationship and don't just look at it as the one person in my company who's right. three levels above exactly. me and that's the only mentor I can get. If you broaden your perspective, you'll benefit from a lot of different types of mentoring experiences. Mm-hmm. And then finally, number three, which uh, I believe is really the most important part is be the magnet so the mentors find you. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is you know, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Mm. Instead of chasing after people that don't know you and don't have a relationship with you or haven't learned enough about you to be able to guide you, instead focus on being the best and doing the best. And when you do extraordinary work and when you are so committed and diligent in what you do, you will attract the right mentors who are actually excited to help you. They will come to you and offer you the guidance that you need because they see the potential in you mm-hmm. and they feel you know, excited and motivated to give you that extra helping hand. And in many ways, they see themselves in you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so by simply being the magnet, you will often find that the mentors will come and uh, come to you. Exactly. So here's your homework. Think about these three things and really kind of do that introspective kind of study on yourself and find out what is it that you need help with. Be specific and think about those things and prep. Do your homework, right? And then think about who are those individuals who can help you so that you can create your mentoring circle of the right people who can help you with those specific things that you're going to ask them to help you with. And then remember, gain proximity by being the best. So do, do your work, work really hard, and then make sure that you are attracting them. So a lot of the times when you are focused on yourself, on what it is that you need to be doing, and you're doing really great work, people will get excited and they will come to you and want to help you and be helpful. Or when you do make that ask, they will be much more willing and much more ready to say, absolutely, I see that you are you know, investing in yourself and let me help you. So remember, be the magnet and get your mentors and accelerate your success. Visit IamBeyondBarriers.com where you'll find show notes and links to all the resources in this episode. Thanks for listening. There are thousands of podcasts out there and we are so grateful that you've chosen to listen to ours. Visit IamBeyondBarriers.com where you'll find show notes and links to all the resources referenced in this episode. And be sure to take the quiz on the website. Your score will tell you where you are, what helps you gain momentum and what holds you back. You'll also get a free guide with cutting edge career strategies. We'd also love to hear from you. Share your comments and topic suggestions on IamBeyondBarriers.com and we'll be sure to address them in future episodes. If you enjoyed our show today, please subscribe and rate the podcast or just tell a friend about it. See you next episode.